السلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکاتی سیدی. و رحمت الله و رحمت الله و برکات. Sayyidi, what are the flashes or small white or blue light I see occasionally while doing spiritual practices? You get glimpses of uh, an energy world. So you may see flashes of white, flashes of blue, close your eyes, see shadows of black moving. But these are, you know, these are just flashes of uh, a sensitive eye that picking up now, you know, energies that are around us at all times, all energies. But not to focus on that because as soon as we put it out into the public then everybody's like, I want to see you, I don't wear it, I see you a white light flash. So these are just things that you you glimpse all of a sudden there's a flash of light like somebody sh shot off a little sort of light bulb. But that's just your eye becoming more sensitive to, to the, the world of light and the different uh, creatures and, and beings that exist within that world of light. You can also in a dark place take a photo with your camera. And you see all these little or orbs, the spherical energy, this energy that has no mass, it, it, mass it shows itself as a circle. Again these energies are everywhere, these beings are everywhere. But more important is to focus on the meditation and making the heart connected and, 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 and being very diligent in the spiritual practices inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam to them. Those who are, are, are not <coughs> diligent in their practices, they'll be motivated to be more diligent in their practices. When Allah begins to send things to people, the creatures that jump in the house and jump on you at night and they don't leave, means that the <laughs> these things are everywhere. So, you know, if you, you do it when you have the ability to do it. Or the circumstances of life will just show itself to become more and more prevalent. So these energies are, are everywhere and if they begin to, to aggravate and agitate people then the <coughs> most common remedy is then you have to increase your meditation. So you have to be able to increase the connection with the shaykh and connection with that light so that your energy becomes stronger to push away these types of attacks or these types of entities that are coming too close. And that the house has to have the aura, the person has to have the zikr and <coughs> that you have to kill the inner devil within oneself. So the anger and bad characteristics that are the signs of an inner devil, they have to be brought down because the inner one is the magnet calling the outside one. So it's a whole formula. If you hear these ta talks but you don't really practice them. And then you're uh, amazed at how you're getting attacked and just, Shaykh help me, it doesn't work that way. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam <coughs> Is it possible to know if Allah is pleased with me? Also can you tell me a little bit about the Ashik jinn as far as his good qualities? Those are two different spectrums of the pole that you're asking from one, <laughs> does Allah love me then, oh tell me about the jinn that want to love me. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, yeah, Allah's love alhamdulillah is, is in the heart of the servant, uh, how much you love Allah? Then you'll know how much Allah loves you because the love for Allah is in the heart only because Allah put it there. So when the servant has an immense love for Allah it's not from his cleverness, it's Allah put that love. And that was Sayyidina Abu Yazid al-Bistami when he was approaching his life's approach towards the Divine and when he reached to a point in which he, he felt that proximity, said, all my life I thought I was loving you, loving you, loving you only to be astonished that your love for me was more ancient and it was calling me. So the servant understands that uh, the immensity of their love for the Divinely Presence, for everything that Allah loves is Allah's ancient, ancient love for them that's calling them. And that's why everything we do is based on that call. So Allahumma labaik, when we go for hajj it's because Allah called us and we came. And you know when we go for hayya salah hayya la falah. And the hawla wa la quwwata illa billah that we, we reply back is that there is no power and might or help 
except through Allah I can't pray unless Allah gives me permission to pray. So if Allah is not calling me to make salah, there's no way you're going to pray because you're clever. Or every shaitan will sit on you and say, no, 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 don't do this kind of stuff. Even people will be attacked trying to make sujood. That the shaitans will block them with an energy that they can't even prostrate their head. So everything is a gift from God Almighty that He allows us to worship Him and He even says that you can't mention Allah without His permission. He says, I don't allow my name to be mentioned in their homes. So I mean their home is one, their physical home and the most important home is their heart. Allah doesn't let His name like He seals that, don't mention my name O servant. That you can't even mention my name in your home or in your heart. And this is Allah's anger on, on a servant. So we pray Allah never to be angered by us. So everything that He gives to us is an immense gift of love and ish. I let you to mention me so that you can receive the reward of that mentioning. I let you to love me so that I can dress you with the reward of that love. And as a result of knowing that love then we seek in our earnest with an immensity of how to make Allah pleased. Not because of fear He's going to punish but how am I going to please Him? What am I going to do to get His attention? How am I going to feed the children that He loves? That's what we've talked to before. You feed your children because you brought them into this world. But why don't you feed the children whom Allah loves and put a smile on their face? Then Allah will make your children to be happy in life. This life of ours is a, is a reflection that do the things that make Allah happy so that Allah does the things that make you happy. When you don't want your children to be sick, help children who are sick. When you don't want your children to have poverty or in difficulty, Help those whom are in poverty and who are in difficulty, that we are the keeper of our brothers. If you don't want to have a day with no food then go out and give food to people and that's what the tariqah, this is what Prophet taught for us is that we're so busy amassing a, a life and money and down payment and, and taking care of everything but we lose sight of the fact that we have to think about what Allah wants and what Allah loves. And that's a sign of my love for the Divine the Presence that I'm always trying to seek what will make him to be even happier. And by making Allah happier it's given that you'll be making Sayyidina Muhammad happy because it's the same happiness and same love, it's the same good actions and good character. So that Prophet looks to these people and says, MashaAllah look at how they're trying, they're trying. How much that shields a difficulty? When you give in the way of Allah maybe there was a horrific difficulty coming towards you and your family and you gave from what Allah has given to you, it's a shield. And that's why they describe that sadaqah, zakat, charity is a shield because you don't know how it's protecting something that was coming towards you of a hardship, a sickness, a difficulty and then the good actions. That going out and feeding people, coming for zikr, doing things for service. So this is the tariqah comes to bring out and exemplify the best of these characteristics and that Allah to love us more and then we begin to love more and Allah loves more. Then you know you're in a very deep and loving relationship with Allah and that's why the tariqah has come and teach then is a struggle. It's not supposed to be because you love Allah, He makes everything easy for you. That Allah wants to see that you know, put in a good struggle, put in a good fight, don't give up. That you continuously struggle, continuously struggle, your struggle is a sign of your success. Not what the dunya tells you, that's why if you're not guided by shaykhs you fall because you look and say, everything I'm doing is failing. And I look to the guy next to me and every TikTok and it seems like they're more successful. No, no, they're working their way into Jahannam. When Allah wants you successful, nothing seems to be working the way you want it, right? Because you just keep struggling in the way of Allah and that's success, that you keep struggling, keep struggling. It's not a matter of how many times you know you succeed but how many times you don't fail, that you don't stay down 
when difficulty comes you get right back up and keep going, keep going, keep going. And that's a sign of rijal, these are the maturity and manhood in the Divinely way. Now how many times they crossed the finish line and everybody gave them trophies but how many times everybody kicked them down and you still see them standing. And that's what that's what's important that they don't go down until you know you, you've pulled the, their legs off and their feet off and their hands off and you cut their tongue too. And that was the example from Sayyidina Abbas that these were the, the sign of uh, the Ahlul Bayt and all the holy companions but this was the sign of, Mu of Muharram and Ashura. That for him to go get water for the family there was nothing going to stop them. He went, they cut his hand off, he took with the other hand. They cut that hand off, he took with his, his, his mouth the bag of water to take back to the camp until they cut his legs and limbs. Means that our life is about continuously moving and getting up with the ability that we have to get back up inshaAllah. And to Allah Allah belongs the, the victory, ours is the life of struggle and, and that is a great accomplishment to see somebody that's capable of continuously struggling in Allah's way inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah We would like to try to eat and drink the way you do, can you please <coughs> tell us how you prepare your tea? Tea? I put a tea bag, I put hot water and some stevia, inshaAllah. <laughs> and then mention, mention Illa Sharaf al Nabi and always pray on everything you eat and drink inshaAllah so that it has the, the blessings and the nazar of Prophet Ahlul Bayt, Ashab al Nabi and awliyaullah fi samai wa fi ard. That everything you do you read the Illa Sharaf al Nabi, the du'a on the app, the Naqshbandi standard du'a that everything to be blessed with these tajallis so that what we eat and drink to have its uh, immense lights and blessings upon it inshaAllah. Uh, Rumi Rose Teas dot com? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, get Rumi Rose Teas, yeah. <laughs> InshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam So does time travel exist in the material realm? Yeah, that was the video these guys put out a, a great video, it was amazing entry, uh, amazing opening. You, you saw the one that they put out on the weekend, oh, The Gate of Hell, very beautiful in, uh, intro that they put together and uh, put out for the uh, Mandela effect and time travel most definitely. That this is uh, one of the big signs of fitna of Dajjal that very few people know or even talk about that what he's going to do in the realm of uh, jinn and trying travel because their, their realm is not a physical realm but they are been given permission to move between the kitab and move between time and cause a fitna in time that will affect. So I would recommend that you watch the latest vi video Hell's Gate that describes the verse of Qur'an in which Allah describes in the verse of the folding like a scroll that if, if A all the way through Z is this dunya Allah will allow the folding and through the folding they can move, haqiqat al tai they can move two points together and move through that by Allah is a might. The jinn are free to move through that but now they have a permission to affect the timeline and different dimensions. Anything if you go back in time and do something to a building, the future that building doesn't exist, that person doesn't exist, that event doesn't exist. If you can go back into time and alter that event, its reality will change instantly as we're sitting. So they just merely go back into that and change. That and in the same verse of folding up the time Allah describes how He creates a new creation at every moment. Means He's giving a permission for them to move it and Allah makes a new creation based on that instantaneously. So amazing uh, ayat al kareem that Allah has given everything to Prophet and Prophet has given everything to his nation with the gift of Holy Qur'an that everything is contained within it and every reality is, is contained within it and that's why these labels, Hafiz al-Qur'an means he's a guardian, you know, he's a memorizer. But there are guardians of the Holy Qur'an that by virtue of 
blockchain because they're not centralized. The Qur'an is not centralized as one book in one location. There are one billion reciters so Allah sent the original blockchain. So anyone who wants to think that the tech people understand it, no, no, the first one to send it was Allah is decentralize your holy book, right? The other ones who had centralized holy book well you could go there and change it. So they would change the Latin that nobody could read Latin and then oh everybody's book became different and changed. When you decentralize which is a blockchain, so one billion people contain the Qur'an within their heart. So they're the ones whom Allah make them to be the guards of the Qur'an. You change anything in that book they'll all know it. You may affect one person but you're not going to affect the billion people that memorize. So that was Allah's reality for Dajjal to prepare the nation. The most prepared nation on this earth is the Muhammadan nation, the nation of Islam under Sayyidina Muhammad Allah prepared them with these things. And those whom Allah loves of a saintly nature they're called mahfuz, they're guarded. Mafus from what? Guarded from what? Was again this issue on the timeline that nobody can go back and say, oh this one's going to be with Sayyidina Mahdi, let's go kill all his grandparents way back. But if you kill them then this person wouldn't appear now. So but no their file is an encrypted file in which they don't have access to that. Because this is a book and also Allah has encryption on that book, He has to allow is Izzat, Izzat al-Rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen. All three Izzats have to put a key for that shaitan to be doing that. So then those whom are masoom, Allah has given them an encrypted file in which their entire lineage is encrypted so that shaitan can't alter that to mess with the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi So these are titles Allah brought that maybe wasn't clear a thousand years ago why would you be called guarded? But would be clear in the last nation, the last group of people in this nation that would be facing the dajjal and would understand why Allah called them to be guarded and why the reciters of Holy Qur'an are guardians and the protectors of that reality. So alhamdulillah these are very deep realities and they're all opening now. They're reopening those, those machines that they had closed for three years. So through that a lot of dark matter and bad characteristics and for us just to un- understand the dark matter like, قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ falaq that there's something in a darkness that people don't understand and I think they have it in the Spider-Man or is it the dark night with the alter ego of someone good and heroic is their demon is waiting. So everyone has a very bad version of themselves called their nafs. And if that nafs becomes empowered from that dark force and from that darkness then it becomes and becomes overwhelmingly powerful over the physicality and then become like that, what's that movie the other one look like a serpent. Venom. Venom that we put out on that other show. Their venom, the poison that enters them from that blackness will overtake their humanity and their physicality, their desires and their characteristics are no longer of a human nature. And humanity will become very rare upon this earth and those whom are, inshaAllah they should be very enlightened souls because they take the bounty of Allah and the blessings of Allah inshaAllah. But watch the latest episode, very nice. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Sayyidi, I am recovering from COVID and have been feeling uh, depressed. This is not normal for me. Why is this happening? InshaAllah, <coughs> most of it's psychological. That <clears throat> to think there's this word and that people 
think that maybe they were protected from it, that they couldn't get it or whatever it is. Think of it as the word flu, cold, that is historically been, you caught a cold, it was a strong cold, take the vitamins that the tariqah has been asking, take the turmeric and ginger, take the antiparasitical medicines that third world countries are, are allowing. You take all of these things, do your zikr, your salawats and all your practices and don't think about it. Don't let your mind to grab something and then become psycho… Uh, what was it? Psychosomatic where your mind overtakes an issue and then keep whispering to you, oh look how weak you are, how you got this, how you got this, what's this now, oh now you're doomed, now you have this, no, no, no. So take a lot of this from the mentality of what they're pushing and that this is a cold and a flu, I do my recitations, I take the medicines that they've advised, the shaykhs have advised and go forth and don't worry about it. It's like a battle, you got uh, hit by a sword, you patch up your wound and keep rolling. But don't keep thinking about the issue, so it's a matter of your mind now and the mind of people. There is a general fatigue but take the ginger and all the medicines, all the vitamins that are being recommended and you know take all of these things religiously for your immune system. Do your meditation, do your spiritual practices, do all of these energy because we said these are multi-faceted that you have your physical, so bring your physical strength back up. You have the spiritual in which the energy is low, make the connection, make all of the, the things, give your donation, be of service put out the links, be of service, do things. Be active, don't fall prey to these things and become saddened and depressed and then yeah it's just a cycle that people can't lift themselves out of. Definitely don't involve yourself in drugs and harmful substances that will bring and bring the door of shaitan right to your home. That's all he wants is to make people to be engaged. We said before, open your heart, open your mind and figure out what's happening. It's not a coincidence that, that they're opening the gates of free drugs. It's not a coincidence in which they want the youth to be sort of not mentally present. There was a video called The uh, Simpsons Kitchen Sink. Remember we shared that one? And the image where these kids were playing these games and they just zoned out. They didn't even know that there was destruction everywhere and that's what's going to happen, right? They're introducing for them free drugs, they sign up, they can go get these drugs, they begin to one. The drugs are not normal drugs, don't think they're organic, don't think that these are coming from green bushes and greenness. These are laced with chemicals to cause schizophrenia and to cause neurological damage upon the brain of human beings. And if the neuron and neuron receptors in the last days begin to separate, you will not be able to delineate between real and false. And that black matter that comes flips you out, flips you out, you stand no chance against these difficulties when you're not arming yourself with your belief and your understanding. So there's not a the coincidence. They're releasing these all over the Western world. In Vancouver they were putting it on the streets. There was a heroin and cocaine day in which they were handing it out to people. They didn't care if people's kids were going and getting them. So yeah, these, these things are not a coincidence to intoxicate the youth and to take their mind and their function away, introduce video games that just will take their brain away. All these things, these are a sign of the last days, keeping oneself he healthy happy, salawats, practices, energies, all these things then is a fight for our survival. And then to continuously do that, you take the vitamins all the time, not when you're sick, that's again what we called, what was the proactive. passive, proactive. You know, prepare yourself for difficulty, not reactive, oh I got sick now I'm going to go, where's ginger, where's ginger? No, you're supposed to have your immune system high. So that the hit is always weakened and weakened by your fortress, your fortress is strong. Not you, you don't have anything, no walls on your fortress. As soon as you become attacked, now you want to build a fence? 
<laughs> doesn't make sense. So people live their life like that, say, really? Well, I'm sick now, say, what I got to take, what I got to take? What do you mean what you got to take? You just turned on now? So no, take it from now, take it all the time, take all these ginger turmerics all the time, take all your vitamins all the time. Do your salawats, do your practices, do the meditation. Because this is just the beginning, they're going to come in rows, they're going to come rolling in with all of these things. And inshaAllah Allah make to be mahfuz and guarded, then they, they get knocked down, they brush themselves off and get back up and start running, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Could you please share again the reality of hijama? The reality of hijama? It pull the blood out. It's, inshaAllah it's the cupping on the back and the importance of cupping in which the blood has to be pulled. So it's three little scratch marks like a little cat mark, not cutting the, 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 the transdermal layer of the skin so deep that you get an infection. They're like scratches on the skin. They put a cupping pump uh, device on the back and they begin to pull out on a cupping and they pull out the blood from the points on the back and the lower spine. And the purpose for that is one for the, the purity of the blood, that the blood stores all of the, the negative and dirty iron upon the shoulder. So it's important that the blood to be pulled out, to be cleansed and all the dirty iron that cloths as a very dark, dark red, almost blackish red for that blood to be cleansed. So that the bad iron, the toxins of the body the, or medicines that don't leave the body, all of these to be pulled out and that the blood to be cleansed as a result, the heart to be cleansed, the firasan and the vision of the servant to be cleansed. So it has many, many health benefits and many spiritual benefits to cleanse the body of this system because the blood moves throughout the body and then all the, the dirty iron begins to be stored upon the shoulders. And that's exactly where the shayateen or the, the marada, the, 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 the bad creatures try to land, the ifrit land upon the back because they can grab hold of that dirty area and the dirty iron that's back there and they basically claw. So some people might get a lot of itching on their back, these are these things and these ifrit that are trying to land onto their shoulder. Which is common not to be scared because somebody's going to say, oh no I'm itching, no I'm itching, no don't worry about it. <laughs> it's common that if you become more sensitive to energy you're going to feel energy everywhere, you feel energy on your feet and your everywhere because it's just the energy world that we live in, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Is the ego a memory of physical experience or is it something that already exists when we are born and somehow inherited from ancestral generation? What was that, the first word? Is the ego a memory of physical experience or is it something that already exists when we are born and somehow inherited from ancestral generation? I don't know if it's the same answer, it could be depending upon what your point of reference or the point of reference of the, the question is, but it's a creature, <clears throat> it's a being. So people whom have fought their ego and fighting their ego, it's a being that made from Jahannam and his, his, his proximity is to shaitan, his aff affinity is to shaitan, so his source is from badness and his affinity is towards badness and God put within us an opponent and then put a soul that's from paradise, an ego that's from below and the problematic. As a result this is our yin and yang and our battle in life between good and bad and our whole fight is to subdue this creature. Because our angelic reality is strong from zero to two because we're just from paradise, we have a very powerful energy and we are of a saintly nature. As a result of that complete submission upon the Divine it's powerful but as soon as the characteristics of its humanity begin to come at that point at two, three years old 
now is going to determine if he's going up or he's going down. That if his ego is subdued, the mother is trained, the feeding is clean, the environment in the home is pure, clean and praying and everything of goodness, then the subduing of the ego of the child is brought down, then the likelihood of the child to go towards angelic reality is higher. And if the characteristic and the environment within the home is not and they're continuously battling between their practices, not practicing, when the house and the family is not agreeing to do the submission, to do the praying, to do all the practices, then as a result the child becomes more lenient towards the lower desire. Because the ego was not brought down, the ego was not continuously restrained then it became empowered and as a result of empowering it goes more with the devil towards the negative characteristics. And then as they grow up then more and more towards they fight their negativity, continuously battle their negativity, their negative desires until Allah inshaAllah guide and if Allah guides them to the shaykhs and to the tariqahs then they'll be guided on how to bring down their bad characteristic and how to bring up their Divine Reality and their Angelic Reality upon their souls inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Should I be worried about coming across repetitive events like finding strands of hair every time in your food or coming across a specific set of numbers? Forgive my ignorance. No worries, don't think about these things. That's not tariqah, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> In the sense that people think that, oh when, when the shaykh is saying to, to meditate, like I'll meditate on the Qur'an and keep looking at it and keep looking at it and, and, and try to figure out, oh this like this, it's not that. When they say meditation they mean that make your heart connected, connect with the shaykhs, connect with the world of life. When you feel the light presence and you begin to recite a verse of Qur'an, you recite that back into your heart, think about the words that you've said, use that in your meditation. InshaAllah a little bit of inspiration on the verses come into your heart. But overly thinking something in which, wow, why is that like that? The squirrel just walked by. And then he looked at me and maybe this was like a sign for me and they pick up everything. They're starting to go into every type of, what was this, what was that, that's not, that's not meditation, that's not contemplation and borderline can begin to cause the believer and, and somebody a lot of difficulties within their head. So not to worry about those types of things, if, if you think there's something, a hair in it then make sure that everybody is you know pulling their hair back when they're cooking because if everything's a lot of hair and they keep making food there's going to be hair in everything that you eat. <laughs> not overthinking that, that there's not a sign from Allah that you know, there's, there's hair there. But you know the meditation is completely different than over analyzing, I just looked at the license plate of the car and I saw 28, I saw this 28 again, I saw 28, is 28 important? Everything's important. But not in reference to your life, 28 is important, it's in reference to the huruf. It's not about me finding about me, I'm not interested in knowing about me. I'm not interested in, is there like a secret sign for me? I'm interested in burying me, I'm nothing, I'm no one, but I want to know what the secret of 28 in the heavens is. What's the reality of the huruf? What's the reality of the 28th letter of Qur'an? That's when these things are important. Not for me, is there a secret for me? I keep seeing these numbers, it's important for me. No, me I, I was supposed to die at the beginning of the tariqah, that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, it's me is not relevant. When I took me out of the way, this became between Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad and that I negate myself, negate myself, negate myself so that I can see the reality of the heavens in which I'm non-existent. So again all of these. These, these understandings of tariqah are important to understand so that we don't go slowly, slowly in a different direction, inshaAllah. And people love the questions and answers. So if people are getting a little bit tired of it but the people online they love 
the question and answers because it's coming across from different people questions that they didn't want to ask but they understand the relevance because it's all the same path. So everybody's going through similar waswases but maybe they don't want to ask it. So it's important, these are important you know subjects for people to come across. New people are very in, in, in attracted to the questions and answer sessions because they, they sort of cover a, a wide range of similar topics, we don't go too far left and right. So it's all similar about the unseen and the energy and the energy world inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Thank you for the question on chakras. Would the formula for the meditation also be the same for a detrimental energy that's manifested with an organ or organs? Yeah, the basis of every meditation on our system is going to be the same. Is that I first have to make the, sh the connection with the shaykhs because I negate myself. If I don't, if you don't take the path of a guide then you're saying you are the guide. So you do understand the subtlety of difference in meditation? Some say, I don't need a guide, so then you're the guide. So yeah, I'm going to meditate and empower myself. Why would God give you something to make you a pharaoh, right? Because if you empower that person and, and Allah sends more energy to them, well, what are they going to be in two years? A, ph a pharaoh where they think they have power, they don't have to listen to anyone. Look how much energy I have, I can do what I want. But who's going to give that to you? Shaitan will because he likes pharaohs on the earth, he, he likes zalims, he wants everybody to be like that former guy who was running the, the capital, everybody with the red hair, orange hair and he want everybody to be oppressive, everybody to be angry. So he builds anybody like that, he loves that but not Allah, Allah doesn't like that at all. So when you bring a guide into the meditation you're basically telling yourself, you shut off and connect. So you negate yourself, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Of course I have nothing that send your light into me, that send your, your energy upon me, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And then you learn how that just dress me, that I'm nothing, I want to make myself like a glass clear and see through. Your tajalli dress me and that your eyes look through my eyes, that your ears hear through my ears that your lips speak through my lips so that my glass is so clear that when you come I am you and your tajalli is through me. So then he came through his muhabbat, he entered into the presence of his shaykh and he went out as his shaykh because he went out in the fana of his shaykh. And then his shaykh takes him then to the presence of Prophet ﷺ the same, become nothing again, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing until which the Muhammadan light begins to dress more and more to his hearing, to his seeing. All of that system is based on being nothing. When I do that system and I'm nothing, I'm nothing and the light is coming, the light is coming. When that's solid and understood, if there's a sickness then I ask for that light to focus on where that sickness is. So in these types of sicknesses that are coming, as soon as I make my meditation, enter into their presence and ask that, Please send from your light into my chest, the energy in my chest is not right, I can't breathe correctly and you begin to meditate with them and their fires begins to pull a heat into your chest. So their light begin to illuminate and burn anything that's trying to penetrate within you. So of course you'll target your energy where you're needed. If something was coming into your head, into your throat and trying to uh, make this sickness, this this multicon one was trying to target the sinuses and the face of people. So then you would be in your meditation strong with the, the muraqabah and asking that from your nazar please shine your light upon my face. And you sit in that meditation playing your salawat with light just focusing onto the face so that it will burn away any negativity that's trying to again enter into that and sound to that person. So most definitely. <clears throat> And once your meditation is strong and your practices are strong then anyone in your home is the same that when they're not well you sit next to them, you make your madad and your, your connection and then you visualize that you're in, in their presence and that you're sending light from you onto them. 
and they just sit and relax, close their eyes, don't think about anything and then you meditate that your life you made a meditation, you connected with the shaykh and that you're focusing now to send your light onto that child. And you begin to send your energy onto the spouse, the relative or whoever of your loved ones. <clears throat> so definitely this is our, our system of, 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 uh, of, uh, of the soul and, and dealing with the soul. The shaykh can reach anyone on his focus. As soon as he focuses he can enter right into the presence of that person and begin to affect them. He can grab the heart of that person and begin to crush them. That's why Allah warns don't fight them because they can be very harmful. But they don't use that because this is not their system. But they're very fluent with their soul. If they enter into a place with their soul they have a lot of abilities. So this is a, is a very powerful way and a very powerful reality. So alhamdulillah you're free from the, the confines of the physicality and that when you build that energy and build that practice the soul is immensely powerful. Immensely powerful, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam What to do if we live in a region where we cannot support through any of the channels? What region would that be? Pakistan they can support, India they can support. There's not a place on this earth that people can't support. Support can be sending links into WhatsApp groups. There's Indian WhatsApp groups with 30,000 or no telegram groups with 20,000, 30,000 say for Pakistani groups. Take a link from YouTube and share it onto these platforms. Send people, send these links from the charity, from the YouTube, from the Nur Muhammad, from uh, Facebook, share the links, put out uh, all sorts of things. If you're in an area and you can go and give food. Put a shirt from Fatima Zara, make a shirt for Fatima Zara helping hand. Wherever you are get a blue shirt, ask for us to send you a logo. You go print two or three shirts, go find somebody who's giving food at a local grocery store that wants to throw it away, pick up the food and go give food out. So there's nothing that people can't do. Now actually sending a donation. There's all sorts of Bitcoin now donation, there's NFTs, crypto, there's uh, PayPal, there's credit card, eh, there's everywhere. It's a matter of the person wanting to and then finding a way to, to do it. If your area is in great need for the food then you know make a shirt, two shirts and go out and get food. I think Nasir now is in India with some people and he's cooking a huge pot of brioni <laughs> every Friday and then giving out uh, 100 people uh, food. And he, Got a couple other guys to come with him and uh, you know misbah's uh, 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 all over Costco and picking up tons of food. <laughs> so, yeah, now the guys are emailing in from, from the UK and same system, we have to find where everybody is in a, in a little collective group close by then print out 10 shirts and go hit the, the, the big box stores that giving away food, throwing away food and show our logo, show our non-profit status letter. And you go and say, can I get some of the food that you're throwing away and then put it in my minivan and, and go give it out. And once you do that 10 times, 20 times and you get a group of people wanting to help and to do that, then we come together and try to buy a van in that area and, and decal the van, wrap the van and then we go out and, and do it on a routine and disciplined weekly basis. So very easy, it's just a matter of, of people wanting to do it. I said, there's so many people in Tariqa and they don't even have a website. You know, they sit together, they say they're shaykh, they're, they're groups, they, they do this and they do that. They don't have a website. Nobody wants to get together and put 65 bucks to make a website. It means it just, it's a call to the men who want to stand up. When they want to stand up, there's a way to do everything. So it just takes a few good men. One guy stand up in an area and said, that's it, I'm, I'll do the, the shirts here, I'll ask everybody to come and they come. And people Allah will send, you build it Allah will send it. And the people come and before you know it you got 10, 15 people or 5 people and you're out there hustling to, to give food, to give uh, these good deeds away and you're gaining the nazar of awliya in your area and uh, Prophet alhamdulillah. So if, if there's a will, there's a way. Even he went to Kashmir he gave food, 
and maqams and make qurbans. If you, if you have the desire, you can make it happen and that's Allah's greatness. You're a very powerful creation, right? If you can manifest every bad thing, you don't think you can manifest all these beautiful things. If you want it, you have a desire for it, Allah provides an, a way to, for it to happen inshaAllah. Alright guys, I think that you guys entertained enough inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, Misiri Surat al-Fatiha.